At least nine Republicans are now vying to become Speaker of the House amid historic gridlock in Congress. House Republicans will hear from each candidate tonight behind closed doors before voting to select a nominee on Tuesday. This is their third attempt at choosing a new leader since Kevin McCarthy was ousted nearly three weeks ago. And without a new speaker, Congress is virtually paralyzed. So for more, let's bring in Jay O'Brien on Capitol Hill and ABC News contributor, former Republican New York Congressman John Katkow for more. Jay, Republicans couldn't rally behind Jim Jordan or S Steve Scalise. Now they have nine candidates throwing their hats in the ring. So is there a front runner in that group? Uh, that's the open question, Diane. Right now, a, a lot of people consider Tom Emmer to be the front runner, and that is because he's the only one in that running that's in leadership. He's currently the majority whip, the number three Republican in the House. But Emmer, like most of the candidates you just showed in that graphic, he's got some built-in opposition from Trump world. You've also heard of candidates in the running like Byron Donalds and Kevin Hearn. Kevin Hearn is the chair of the Republican Study Committee, which is a prominent job up here on Capitol Hill. And then there are more. You see them there on your screen. We know that those candidates were working the phones this weekend trying to work on their support and they're going to go into a candidate forum this evening and they're on track to do secret ballot votes to pick who their eventual speaker candidate, their nominee will be tomorrow. But this is by tonight when they have that candidate forum it'll be the third candidate forum they've had since Kevin McCarthy's ouster. Tomorrow's vote will be the third vote and Republicans have yet to coalesce around a candidate. Now, John, Kevin McCarthy threw his support behind Tom Emmer over the weekend, but his support wasn't enough to bring Jim Jordan across the finish line. And former President Trump's allies, as Jay mentioned, are already speaking out against Emmer here. So can he become speaker without getting them on board? Well, I certainly think uh, Emmer is a front runner, but that doesn't mean an awful lot right now because a front runner means you might be able to get the majority of your conference, which will allow you to bring a vote to the floor. But to get that magic number, which is only four or five detractors in the Republican Party, is going to be extraordinarily difficult. And what's set in, the malaise that's set into this party really has to do a lot with uh, people not being able to get to yes. Uh, you're already hearing people saying why they couldn't support somebody, but they're not saying a lot about why they would support somebody. And, and until you flip that dynamic, I think this is going to go on for a lot longer because uh, I think it's going to be very difficult. But Make no mistake about it. Emory's got the, you know, he ran the NRCC for two terms, which is the election arm. He brought him back the majority. So on paper, he looks like a logical choice. He's on whip now. And uh, let's see what happens going forward. But I think it's going to be a long slog yet again. Uh, Jay, in the meantime, there are some major legislative items on the table waiting to be dealt with. So what's at stake as this goes on? Yeah, you can't bring bills to the floor to be voted on without a speaker, Diane. And so that means the president's $100 billion foreign aid package that includes assistance for Israel and for Ukraine, that couldn't get through the House. It couldn't be brought for a vote. Any legislation that would fund the government by that deadline of mid-November and the looming government shutdown, that couldn't be brought for a vote. And I've talked to Republicans over the course of the weekend who, despite the fact that we're on day 20 now without a speaker, don't expect this process to move any quicker. In fact, it might be slower because there are nine candidates right now vying for the job. John, this battle for speakership has exposed some major divisions within the Republican Party. Could this impact their ability to govern going forward? And what about their ability to keep the House majority in 2024? Well, there's no question the answer to all those questions is yes. Uh, first and foremost, uh, will it impact their ability to govern? It already has. And it's going to continue because you have this small faction of the far right, who with a small majority feel uh, overpowered, uh, you know, an overblown sense of power, and they're going to exercise it willingly and recklessly like they already have. So that's one thing, yes. And the second thing is, how are you in a, a swing district going to go out and articulate a reason to vote for the Republican Party when you have such dysfunction in the face of so many uh, emergencies on the national, international uh uh, arena right now. So, yeah, I think it's going to hurt them unless they get their act together. If they get their act together, they rally around someone like Emmer, and then they get the ball rolling. This will soon be forgotten. But if this lingers on much longer, don't forget you have a, uh, a debt ceiling coming down the pike. You have the budget in a few weeks. Uh, they have no bills passed uh, to, to fund the government. And here we are again with another crisis in two weeks. So, the longer this lingers, the more damage and lasting damage is going to do to the party. And it's also exacerbated many fissures within the party that are now hardening those fissures. Uh, and that's going to make it difficult going forward. 
All right, Jay O'Brien, former New York Congressman John Katko, thank you both. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.